I'm Neil Tomlinson, Chair of the Department of Politics and Public Administration. Well, politics is one of those kind of weird disciplines where it crosses over just about every every sector. Well, it does cross over every sector. The public sector is obviously the, you know, the government uh, at all levels is facing huge um, retirements in the next few years. So they've been beating the drum for years now about the need to renew and replace and get younger people and all of this kind of stuff. Um, as I said, though, as they're doing that, they tend for more senior positions to like people with master's degrees. Um, but business, people with politics degrees have often been involved, especially businesses that have some kind of international activity um, where they have to deal with governments that they don't know very much about. Um, they might like to have political science students involved in that, uh, political science graduates. But even in Canada, I mean, the average Canadian really doesn't know very much about how their government works. And businesses need to know how their governments work. So there's always a job for somebody to do, especially in big companies, there's always uh, government relations kinds of positions, which is private sector. And then in the third sector, as I said, there's the sky is kind of the limit there. The organizations are all over the place in terms of, of what they hire and what particular skills they're looking for. But again, those organizations will have a lot to do with government and they need to understand how government works because that's where part of their funding comes from. That's certainly where most of their regulation comes from. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend necessarily that most students go to graduate school unless they have a pretty clear idea of where they want to go in their career path. An undergraduate degree, a Bachelor of Arts degree, is a, very, is, a, is a common and somewhat generic degree. But when you start going to graduate school, it's a little bit different story. I mean, the people aren't going to invest that kind of time and money unless they sort of know what they want when they get out the other end. In the public service now, um, the governments of the city, the province, and the federal government, um, they really, for any kind of position that's more, not just an entry level flunky kind of position, they're looking for a graduate degree. They want a master's degree. So somebody who really wants to do like policy analysis or one of those kinds of fields, they probably should go to graduate school. It's not to say that they wouldn't get a job without a graduate degree, but the route to to moving up the ladder and getting um, you know rewards, promotions, all that kind of thing is going to be much slower for a student who doesn't have a ma or for an employee who doesn't have a master's degree than for one that does. So in those cases, we would recommend for sure that they go to graduate school. Um, a lot of students still do politics as an entry to law school. It's, as far as I know, still the largest single discipline that feeds uh, law schools across the country. Um, and we uh, seem to have a few who are, who are headed in that direction. So a student that was uh, wanting one piece of advice upon, upon leaving, I think the best thing that they could do is to try to graduate with the best marks that they possibly can. And the other thing that, which is probably a little bit related to that, is to try and actually get to know their faculty members so that they can get good reference letters. It's very hard for faculty who are teaching large classes um, to give really good reference letters um, to, to students who come asking for them if that student has never done anything to contact them or whatever. They may be a very good student, they may have really good grades, but if they're a person who just come, comes to class and hands their assignments in, uh, the faculty member is only going to be able to comment on their academic work. And very often with a job, it's important for them to, ha for employers are looking for other things. They're looking for evidence of involvement in other organizations and all sorts of those kinds of things. And that's, uh, um, that's not necessarily the faculty member that's going to be the only person commenting on that because you'll obviously have a CV. But it's important for the faculty member to be able to say this is an engaged person, this is, you know, a good, a good citizen, that kind of thing. Because that's really what often is, uh, is if they're depending on references, that's what they're looking for. Most social sciences and humanities degrees are what you might call general preparation. And the, f the likelihood of getting a job that relates directly to one of these degrees is probably not real high. Uh, the point of the degree isn't to pe teach people how to do a particular trade or craft, it's to teach people how to think. And that's a commodity that is used in every job. So people who have degrees in all sorts of kind of 
unrelated areas end up being very successful business people. They work in the third sector, doing you know running voluntary nonprofit organizations. They work in the public sector sometimes, um, and many of them start their own businesses. And it's kind of universal transferable skill, in other words.